Hi there, folks. Welcome to another episode breakdown. Today, we take a look at episode 41. First, the timeline. Ah, uh, another couple tall, skinny bastards over that way. I'll cover that in just a bit, though. Let's start off with some background replacements. In this scene, I needed 17 to be a little more conversational. Unfortunately, the original scene did not provide me with much, so I had to cut 17 out of a later episode and replace the background accordingly. The same happens with this scene later on with Krillin. I also made a small edit to the scene where Vegeta explodes in rage during his cutaway. I cut out his body, recolored it, gave it an outer glow, and laid it appropriately while using the sphere eyes and blur tools to give him this little visual cue of him charging up before expanding outward and exploding. You can see a little bit of it during the actual explosion as well. Also, I should note the amount of moving lip flaps in this episode was, again, pretty high. Although I actually prefer it as so I can give those dialogue heavy scenes some character. Now, let's take a moment to talk about an effect that isn't mine. The visual cue to explain time travel via Gohan. You see, when we originally wrote this scene out, we were essentially just using it as normal exposition, setting up for trunks and moving the scene along. However, when I finally got to that point, it seemed really cheap not to have a visual cue and just have Gohan talk to everybody. So, I went to a fellow editor friend of mine, someone you're all very familiar with, voice of Son Goku and Son Gohan, Masako X. Hi, I'm Masako X, and I'll be quickly looking at the motion graphics I produced for episode 41. It was a short 10 second explanation that Gohan makes about multiverse theory using cute graphics and time machines and wibbly wobbly stuff. To make this sequence, I used Adobe After Effects, which is what Photoshop and Flash's love child would look like. Now, I can probably guess that you're like the stick figure man on screen, and you must be thinking, Whoa, this is all intense, the interface is all over the place, and there's so many things and lines and ah! Yeah, at first glance it is, but when you break it down, the timeline here is full of small animations pieced together into one sequence, or what After Effects calls a composition. I made the chalk effect from using strokes and distortion tools to create an animated look, and would mimic what would happen if chalkboard characters came to life. The chalkboard background is one that I sourced from the internet from several images to create my own version which would be satisfactory to the production. I then took the finished audio track that Kaiser supplied me with and timed the actions to that audio. And there we go! A kid-friendly explanation about how Trunks can go back in time. And it's now time to hand back to Kaiser! Mosco is one of the most talented visual editors I know personally, so mad props to my editing bro. Of course, that leaves me to my two most difficult edits in this episode. The first being the phone call. See, originally, the phone setup was a tad more... analog. I wanted to upgrade it a little bit and bring it into the modern day, mostly just to sell the joke better. I also had to edit out Krillin's hand from the shot to give me a clean base to work with. The actual phone GUI is made up of several free stock images I found online, along with what is essentially visual filler stock footage in the back. I obviously tried to customize the ID picture of Bulma and even found a brand new font that would look appropriate for a cell phone GUI. Then there's the shot of Krillin's hand here. This is actually very similar to a shot I'd done before, in episode 30, with the same setup on Vegeta's ship. What I did was, I cut out Krillin's hand frame by frame via Photoshop. I then repositioned it appropriately. It might seem difficult, but I actually had a lot of fun with it. Unlike this next and last edit. See this scene at the end here? Yeah, this took me hours to finally finish. When we scripted the scene, I knew that I would use this shot here. However, I didn't account for the fact that the ship dips near the end of the scene and the background does not repeat. I didn't want to cut away after the time machine opened, so I worked out what I was going to do. After several failed attempts, I realized I would have to use King and a garbage man on the background of the ship, isolating it, and then make an entirely new background for it to fly on. It wasn't fun. Although it did teach me quite a bit. That's it for the edits this episode, although I'm curious if anyone caught some of the jokes we made with the names. In the beginning, we have Chuck and Jones. And with the two cops, if you look in the description, you'll find the names are Tex and Avery. If you're not familiar with the joke here, Why some older cartoons, you snot nosed kids? And while I'm on it, here's a cute little fact. Did you know that I voice Oolong? Well, that is frickin' tasty! What's in this? I'm actually doing an approximation of one of his oldest voices in the English-speaking world that not a lot of people know about. Dave Mallow from an old dub in 1989, where his name was changed to Mau Mau. Hold on a minute, Lena. I only came along to keep an eye on you. I have a feeling you're just using us in this cockamamie search to get all the Dragon Balls for yourself. Lastly, you hear that ringtone? That's actually a country rendition of Cat Loves Food. Who's performing it, you ask? 
Ah, uh, just some guy named DJ Sexadillionaire. People say he sounds like one of the actors from the show. I don't know. He's cool, though. And with that, that's all for this episode. Make sure to check out our Vidget Game channel for Vidget Games. Aw, oh, yeah. And buy some shirts. Please. You don't have to. It'd be nice. But we wouldn't blame you if you didn't. I mean, we, we might starve. We won't starve. Although I'm actually starving. I mean, not literally, just metaphorically. I mean, all I've gotten me right now is coffee and a piece of toast. See you next time!